If you have solved a number of linear programming problems in two variables graphically, you might have noticed a phenomenon. A lot of times, you can find an optimal solution that is a corner. Of course, that's not always true. For example, if you minimize x plus y subject to x plus y equals 0, then every pair of x and y satisfying this equality is an optimal solution. But the set of such points satisfying this equality is a line, there's no corner. But for many other cases, you can find optimal solution that is a corner. Of course, for that to happen, the feasible region has to have a corner. Now the question we can ask is, is this true in higher dimensions? We can recognize what corners are in three dimensions, but what about four dimensions and up? For that, we need to generalize the notion of a corner. Or, in fact, we need to come up with a way to define what a corner is in n dimensions. And for that, we look at two and three dimensions and try to get some ideas how we would define that. So here I have uh, something in two dimension and in three dimension. Let's look at the box. So I'm looking at these points. Well, it looks like that there's a common feature between them. You can find a subset of the half spaces defining the polyhedron whose boundary uniquely define that point. In other words, if you take the boundaries of the half spaces, in this case, in, for this point, it will be this half space and this half space. The boundaries intersect at this point, which is also in the set. And in the case of a box, we take the boundary of this half space, the boundary of this half space, and the boundary of this half space. Again, the intersection defines this unique point. Well, it looks like that that will characterize corners. And perhaps in higher dimensions, that's what we're going to do. So if a point in the set is the unique intersection of n boundaries of half spaces that define the set, then that's a corner. Of course, we have to make sure that definition is well defined. Another way to look at this is, it looks like that if we are standing at this point, and if we pick a short line segment that crosses the point, at least one side of the line segment is outside the set. For example, I can pick this little line segment here. Now, no matter how short I make this line segment, there is a side that is outside the set. And if we look at three dimensions, that seems to be a property that also holds. For this point here, well, no matter how short a line segment I take, there is going to be one side of the line segment that lies outside the box. And this is actually the definition that we'll work with. Okay, so let's see. Be a convex set. We say Z in C is an extreme point of C if there does not exist lambda strictly between 0 and 1 such that z is equal to 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y for some x y in c another way to say this is we cannot find distinct x and y in c such that z lies strictly within the line segment between x and y So that corresponds to what we have just said intuitively in two and three dimensions. It turns out that this notion of extreme point is the same as the notion of extreme points we had at the beginning, where we talk about the point being the unique intersection of boundaries of half spaces. That, of course, is something that requires proof. Now, once we have this uh, notion, uh, we can actually show that if, so this is a, theorem, if P is a linear programming problem that has an optimal solution and its feasible region has at least one extreme point, then it has an optimal solution that is an extreme point. 
So this theorem basically confirms what we have observed when solving problems in two dimensions. So if you can find an optimal solution, and if the feasible region has at least one extreme point, then there is an optimal solution that is an extreme point. In other words, you can always find an optimal solution that is a corner, provided that the problem has an optimal solution and the feasible region has a corner.